Well, it's been a while since we made our last video. Yeah. We've been busy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Again. <laughs> so we're going to show you a few clips of what we've been up to. And then Diane's going to show you her new quilt room. And I'll give you a hint. It's the R word. So check out this picture behind us. That's, uh, that gives you a clue what she's into. Yeah. And when I said the R word, renovation. <laughs> renovation. Yeah. Yeah. She's always got something for me to do. Anyway, we'll show you some clips and then we'll bring you inside. Yep. <laughs> well, one might think it's moving day, but it's not. We're giving Diane's room a facelift. <laughs> yep. <sighs> Diane's painting. Again. Are you done yet? Where's the heat register? We could put that on. It's right here. Now, she has to clean out her closet before we can go further. Oh, the closet of shame. Yep. Now you see everything we have. What's your hand on? Okay. Ikea cabinet. Yeah, it's or Diane's new Ikea or... cabinet. <laughs> Took us about three hours to put that together yesterday. <laughs> yeah. You know why? Because the the bracket for the drawer slides. Open one of those drawers. Yeah, one of the slides fell apart and it took me like two hours to try and figure out how to get it back together. I had ball bearings all over the place. <clears throat> wow. I had to take the slide off of the cabinet and um, had to bend the back of it in order to get it all back together again finally in the end. But now, hey, they're all back together and working. And this this is what the room looks like. This this is what happens, ladies, when you're married to a master carpenter. Yeah. <laughs> Shelves are up. What you doing? <laughs> Plain. <laughs> That's the bottom side of her new top. I gotta flip it over and do the top side and then we'll mount that thing. Probably another day. Yeah, she's got to put some poly on the top side. I think two, three coats. At least it's coming along. Are you still remodeling? Oh, man. Aren't you done yet? Oh, no. This won't be done for another couple months. Okay, so come on in. Here we go. Okay, it is my new sewing room. I am so tickled pink over this. I'm just, you can't, I just can't describe it how happy I am with this room. And I've got such a wonderful husband that saw me through this creative process. And he uh, kind of steered me in the direction for me to go in, even though I had a little bit different direction. It all came together and it's just beautiful. So 
why don't I just um, give you a tour, a reveal, uh, going around the room and I'll show you what we did. First of all, we tore out the old purple carpet that was just horrid and we laid down this um, laminate floor and it's the same floor that's in our kitchen and we have another video of us doing that two years ago. So just this having the laminate floor itself just really opens up the whole room and uh, we installed base. Yeah. There weren't there wasn't any base on these walls in here and hey you can't do the job without a new heat register, so <laughs> we put that in too. So what I've got going right here is just one of those really simple little wreath hangers and I've got my um, cutting mats and my um, uh, cutting um, rulers. Oh what brand? Um on the grid rulers. I've got them just hanging right there. Just simple process but it gets them out of the way and then over here is my desk that is actually from my parents one of the first things that they bought when they were newly married in the early 1950s after my dad was discharged from the army after the korean war and once they settled in minneapolis this is one of the first things that they bought so i cherish this desk a lot and of course i grew up with it too and then um, this is one of my uh, uh, small quilts, quilt hangings that I made um, probably 20 years ago. Um, just real simple log cabin and um, yeah, just real simple. And then um, here is a um, um, kind of an Amish inspired wall hanging um, that's, uh, you know, just, just done in those real basic colors. It's called Carpenter's Wheel, I, I think is what it's called. But I did it to honor Tony as being a retired carpenter. And it's all hand quilted. And, um, and then over here is my bookcase. And up here I've got my DVDs. Come on, why don't you come on and pan in here um, if you can. DVDs and then quilt books and cookbooks. Um, pretty much a lot of historic research type of cookbooks and my sewing books and some more miscellaneous um, research books as well as uh, my Civil War books down there too. And this is only about a third of the books that I used to have. I really downsized my book collection and I just donated a lot of my books but this is the books that I really really love. <laughs> I just love them. And uh, this is a, an oil lamp that was in my grandparents' house when I was growing up. So that's their oil lamp. And uh, my curtains I made was the very first thing that I made after we had our had this room all finished because I we needed some curtains up. My uh, the blinds were just all breaking apart and they're just ugly. I hate mini blinds. So that was the first thing that that I sewed. And then when we pan over here, um, one of my plans is to get a, a new sewing chair. This desk chair just doesn't work very well at all. So that's going to be something down the road in a few months, as well as a rug on here too. But for the most part, you know, my room is all complete. And one thing I've always wanted was to have my sewing machine recessed into a tabletop and now we finally were able to to realize that dream and I just love it and uh, you can see how Tony has uh, has it sitting and I'll have you talk about that well what we did was we cut a hole in the top naturally and then I just took some one by eight and I used some hanger bolts. You can see these hanger bolts. <clears throat> They're screwed up into the, the block that's glued and screwed to the table on the bottom. And they go through the, the board that the sewing machine sits on. And then I have a lock nut on those so that we can adjust those so that it can come up and down. So if she bought a new sewing machine, as long as it fits the hole, 
we cut, it would work fine. And I can show you the hole. This is the extension table that came with my sewing machine, so I wanted it to sit flush on here with, with the sewing machine bed so that it gives a little bit more slick surface, especially when I'm um, piecing small quilt pieces. And then we made a little bit of room in the back so that we could get those wires to go in there. I don't know if you can see that hole right there. It was just a notch so that all the wires could go down underneath the table. And this is just a little note that I always put here with the date and the, uh, the sewing machine uh, needle size and the type of needle that it is. So right now um, I've got an 8011 ballpoint needle in my machine because I've been sewing with some knit fabrics. So that's just what that little note is. And then once I'm done with that and go on to the next project, then I'll just um, write my next needle that I'll, I'll put in there. So let's go on to the lights. I wanted some task lighting and my first idea was to just put tape lights under here. Well, I bought them at Menards, real cheap for only $20 for tape lights. But once we put them up, I realized that they weren't bright enough for the task lighting that I was thinking of. You know, hoping that I would be saving a little money and it would, you know, really help out a lot, which it didn't. So what we did instead is Tony has these lights in his training room. So he said, go ahead and order them and we'll put them up. They're really nice and bright, which I knew they were. But... <laughs> I have to keep it unplugged to plug it back in and here's how they look all lit up nice and bright but when I use you can only turn them on with a remote turn them on or off with a remote which is right here and what we realize since we have both the same lights is if I turn them off I turn his off how many feet away is that in your oh room? must be at least um 30, 35 feet from yeah. here. So this is the so this range, uh, this remote has that range. It's of, a 360. We tried yeah. facing it the other direction, uh -huh. and we seem to control each other's lights. So before we <laughs> shut anything off, we have to see if the other one's doing some kind uh -huh. of work. Yeah. Otherwise, if I'm done here, I can't shut it off by the remote. I'll just go and unplug it so that I'm not you know, interfering with the lights when he's working on his train layout. So, you know, it is what it is. It gives us some chuckles and grins and giggles over it. And so what I did with the tape lights instead is, um, this is the remote for the tape lights. So now I've got the tape lights behind there for some accent lighting. So there's times when I come in here and I'll watch TV at night because Tony's watching something that I'm not really interested in. So then I'll just have just the accent lights turned on. Shut off the lights here. And then uh, and if I was feeling, you know, in a real funky mood, I could change the color of the lights if I want, maybe Christmassy or something like that. Or, you know, <laughs> if I really wanted to get you know, funky and start doing disco dance or whatever, you know, I can, you can change the, the strobe on them, but I don't really get into all of that. I'll just keep it just, just as, you know, the, the regular white light, but it's fun. But for the most part, I just, I just love having these lights turned on. And um, this, this is a, a quilt that I had just finished after we had the, um, after we got this all finished. And this was in my UFO pile for like eight years. And it's like, I've got to get this done because I wanted to get some little quilts up on the walls. So I finally finished that. And then um, I've had that quilt for, I made that probably about 20 years ago. And that's all hand quilted. So it just makes a, it's a nice spot right in that space. And then um, baskets, I have different things in it. I've got vintage hats in the round hat box. I've got my photos in this one. 
I've got kitchen cotton in here when I do some little bit of knitting. Um, quilt um, scraps, strip scraps, my sewing basket. This is my garment patterns in here. And I've got some batik fat quarters up here. And um, some of my grandchildren and uh, pictures of my daughter when she was real young. She's 41 now, but I think she's like two and a half there. And my nephew Jason and my niece Leah. And they're all in their, you know, 40s right now anyway. But, uh, and then, um, Tony, um, how did, how did we, uh, how did you fasten this? We put um, cleats on the back of the wall. You can see an end of one here. We put cleats on the back of the wall, and then I have some metal L brackets that's even on the cleat, that, and, that, and that's how I fastened it. I screwed from the L brackets to hold it. You'll see a cove that's running around the top. And um, I put that cove on there because we had a choice. The room is eight feet one and the top is eight feet so I had a half inch on each side it was either that or buy a 10 foot top and waste two feet of it so I bought the eight foot top and then I put the cove around it to make up the difference so that you know you wouldn't see that it's an inch short of course that's just the cheaper way to go so that's why I did that and then this is just a pine board that we stained yeah, it's a glued, it's a glued pine. You can see there's about, oh, I did never counted the strips, but you know, they're only about an inch and a half big. You can see if you look. And it's glued and it's, it's already planed and everything. We bought that at Menards and the real fast story about that is they had one on display. They had one on display and, uh, what was it? It was uh, damaged. It had it had a chip in the end. So they told us to, to, that they had two more in their reserve warehouse. So they showed us those, and both of those were damaged. So they had to reorder these. And it wasn't. This is an in stock item, so they wouldn't let me order a new one. They said they'd have to return the damaged ones and and then they would have to order them and um, just call back at Menards. So it took them about a week or so and they had a new shipment. So we went down and looked at those and, and we found one that wasn't damaged and brought her home. Yeah, and I wanted a, initially I thought I wanted a white countertop, but then I started looking at photos on Pinterest where I got a lot of my inspiration, especially for the shelves. And then I realized, you know, it would it would have been probably too much white. So I went with this, and this is a golden oak stain. And then there's three coats of polyurethane, a satin polyurethane on the top, as well as the, the shelves. And the shelves are the same thing, just pine boards. Just pine. Yeah. Um, so, you know, saved a lot of money, and I got the look that I wanted that I was kind of going for also. And I knew I wanted a countertop that um, was large enough for my cutting mat, even though it hangs over, you know, probably like a half inch or, or whatever. But that that's okay because um, I, I'm mostly, you know, with quilting, I don't have um, fabric all the way to the edge. You know, I'm usually working in the middle. So yeah, I'm fine. And if I, do a, a garment and have a long piece of fabric. I'm either on the floor crawling, cutting it out, or else I'll put it out, out on the kitchen table to cut it out. Um, this this is from Ikea, and if you've ever been to Ikea, um, they've got a lot of good ideas, but word to the wise, don't go on a weekend. <laughs> we, first time we went there was on a Saturday, and it was just mobbed full of people. It doesn't help matters that it's across the street from the Mall of America either. But um, this is an idea that I got off of Pinterest and we, uh, Tony cut a hole in there to put the uh, sewing machine cord through there running back there to the outlet um, yeah. that, that's behind. There's the out, outlet. Well, it's kind of dark. You can hardly see it. Yeah. But I did cut a hole up there 
in the back of that cabinet and um, that's why I ran the cord for the sewing machine you might be able to see it better back there there it goes now you can see it and um, that runs behind the back of the cabinets because there is no outlet over there that yeah. one that's back in here is the only one yeah. and I knew I wanted my sewing machine on this side of the the counter and then my cutting side over here so I didn't know. want to break into the walls and do a whole bunch of mass electric work <laughs> so that's what I did and then I ran this other one yeah and um, put that in this corner so it's kind of out of the way and she's still got a place where she can plug in her iron or whatever else yeah. she needs so. yeah and then um, I was able to get a, I, I used to have a lot more boxes of my sewing stuff in it, so now I'm able to put a lot of that stuff in, in here, um, you know, like I've got my uh, machine attachments, um, sewing machine needles, and my pattern weights here, um, pins for when I'm pin basting quilts, and here is, is my threads, my different threads and bobbins, and these little things are just for lunch meat, so they make nice little notion holders. And um, this is hand quilting thread back there, this is more machine thread there, and um, just uh, different elastics and things for my machine, tracing paper, um, bias tape things of that nature in that drawer, zippers, and here is my sewing ham, ironing ham, my portable alt light, and then um, my knitting needle, my straights, and then this is my circular knitting needles and DPNs in there. And this is just leftover like orphan quilt blocks and trims, um, embroidery, so you can see I'm, you know, just have done a lot of different things, you know, that, that I like to work on sometimes to break it up. And then in here is uh, just a footstool when I just kind of kick back a little bit and it's full of yarn. <laughs> mostly, it's mostly fingering weight yarn, but it, it's full to the top. So I keep that in there. And then this is another uh, little unit from Ikea. When we're shopping for this, we were walking around making our way out and this was kind of like in the laundry section. So it's advertised for laundry, but as soon as I saw it, I thought, wow, that would be great for my fat quarters. So, because I just, I thought the depth was just perfect and it, it was, um, the height is perfect also. So um, I've got my fat quarters in this drawer and in that drawer as well. And then here I've got quilt batting, and this is a quilt kit I've yet to work on yet. And here's some interfacing. And then down here is fabric for the projects that I'm working on. And this will be the next project is um, finally trying to get this quilt um, quilted. And this has been in my UFOs for probably eight or nine years as well. And then this is for a dress, and then this is for a topper. Um, yeah, you can see it's for me it, it works out perfect. And this is a dust cover for my sewing machine that I'm just going to keep right there. And um, and then in my closet, um, you can see it. I think we put a video that it was the closet of shame, but I, now I'm able to organize it a little bit better. Got the ironing board sitting in there, and then. Usually all my bags are sitting um, on a hanger, but I'm using the hanger right now for our wreath on our front door. And then our Christmas decorations, but these tubs, the small one is more quilting stuff, but then the rest of them is all um, clothing for our Civil War reenacting hobby that we do. Just to back up a minute, that, um, that unit there that you're looking at was uh, a quarter inch taller than the drawer system was so what I did was I put spacers on top of that cabinet between the top and the, and the cabinet to raise it raise the top up a quarter inch and then that allowed that unit to just slide right in there 
And then I guess the last thing to show you is my cathedral window um, little sampler. And we have the larger one out in our living room. And I think we have shown that on a prior video, if, I, if memory serves me. But this just goes here to show how you can mix it up and how it looks really different with a black background and with a bright uh, marble type of uh, fabrics. And you know, you can kind of get that idea why it's called cathedral window. It's kind of like a stained glass window. And here again, this is all hand sewn too. And I had started this many, many years ago and I had different fabric in it, you know, like of uh, flowers and birds and butterflies and I just never was really happy with it and I only had about a quarter of it done. So I, was, I, I looked and looked and looked for years for fabric like this and I couldn't find anything what I wanted until I finally found some on Missouri Star Quilt Company, I think that's what their name is, online and that they had a pack of these. So I ordered it and took out the stuff that I had put in there years before and re-sewed everything and it turned out just the way I wanted it. And the way that I, I'm hanging my quilts is with these command strips um, like that so that I don't ruin the walls. So I got this idea off of Pinterest. I think it was Pinterest. Um, it, it holds the fabric um, backing pretty well that I've been, you know, so far uh, so far, it's just holding it um, pretty well, and I did the same thing with my clock back there too. Use the command strips to hold it up instead of having to pound, you know, nails and making a, a sleeve on the back of the quilts and stuff like that. So that's how I have all of these quilts hung is with these command strips. So I think that is about it, and I'm just so happy with my quilt room and sometimes I come in here and I just sit and I just look around and I'm I, I'm just so tickled pink that I have a, a husband with these skills that help me to realize this dream and I just I just love it in here it's a small room it's uh, eight eight one by ten six I think what Tony said so when I have my ironing board out here I still have plenty of room to maneuver which I didn't before before Believe it or not, I took out six pieces of furniture out of this room. It was just cramped. I could barely move. And now I feel like I have so much more room. And like I said, it's small, but it's cozy, and I love it. So thanks for indulging me, and um, have a good day. Well, we hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> That's what we've been working on here for the last couple of months, yeah, off and on. You yeah, know, I mean, yeah. sometimes life sidetracks you to yeah. different things. You know, mm -hmm. been working on this, and then I'm working on my railroad. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, hey, thanks for watching, and uh, hope you have a great day. And we'll start getting some more videos up. Yep. Bye. Bye.